Shay, after obviously such a, a big deficit, what did you guys try to do to, to solve things as five out there just to, to chip away? Well, I think we just tried to play harder. Um, tried to fight. It's easy to, um, to give up in a situation like that. We didn't want to be that team, so we just tried to fight. What do you think accounted for the you know start the first quarter? Do you mm -hmm. feel like that was more them just being uh, you know hungry on another level, or were there um, some controllables on your side? Um, with a lead like that, and after our first quarter, there's definitely some controllables. Um, now some lucky, unlucky stuff could happen, but most of it is is in our hands. Um, it's two nights now in a row we haven't started the way we wanted to, and how we haven't. Um, this season, we usually be good with that. Uh, so we, we, we got to fix that for sure. Yeah, Mark says that you guys always get the car back on the road. Mm -hmm. um, what does that look like for you guys in the next you know, 48 hours? Not to you know, you know, dramatize it's yeah. two games, but obviously you, it's something that's on your mind. Yeah. Um, I think it starts with the start of the game. Um, it's just hard to play from a deficit that big, uh, especially in the league with players this good. Um, when you start like down with a deficit and everything gets amplified the rest of the game, every you're in bonus earlier, it hurts more. You miss a block out, it hurts more. Um, so just trying to play kind of our hardest, play the right way um, from the jump. Mark, um, for two straight games now, I decided, you know, a lack of energy from this point of view. I wonder if between, you know, today and Wednesday, what some of the common denominators you saw um, that came from maybe a lack of energy? Um, I don't know. I just feel like defensively we haven't been good. Um, and to this point, we've been very good. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, but we will watch film and, and try to figure out and correct it for next game for sure. Right, and, it, and it's probably hard to remain perfect, especially after yeah. a stretch like December, is there, would you call this some sort of hangover or how would you label it? Um, just playing basketball in the NBA. Um, we've got out to a good start, um, better than most people expected. Um, we've lost two games in a row that maybe people say we shouldn't or games that aren't to our character. Um, but it happens. You have, to, you have to lose to become a winner. Um, and we've lost two games in a row played the way we didn't want to play for two games in a row. Um, but it's just about how we respond for the next one. Yeah, and we haven't really talked about any rebound or trouble lately because it feels like you either uh, match teams effort on the glass, you know, through that December stretch, or um, you've done other things to kind of gloss over that. But um, tonight they, they win the second chance point 30 to 7. I just wonder what you saw there that, that maybe led to that. Um, a mix of turnovers. Offensive rebounds, um, getting back on defense. But when you don't um, match a team's energy level, those are usually the categories of the game that get out of hand because energy controls all that and effort controls all that. Yeah, and, and now that you mentioned it, I think you just said you have to lose to become a winner. For, uh -huh. for, for you, where do sentiments like that come from? Say again, sir, where does what come from? Sentiments like that, just statements like that in general. Um, I don't know where I got that. Kobe or Michael Jordan, one of them. Um, but yeah, I th yeah I think Michael Jordan said he's he had to fail to succeed. Same thing. Is this a good learning point for the younger guys on the team that proves that it's not going to go your way every night? There's going to be nights like this. Yeah, every every. Every experience you can learn from, but the toughest ones you learn the most from, so for sure. Thunder, uh, Chet, you guys all talk about kind of solving with all five out there. As the game went along, uh, how did you guys do that at a, a higher level? Uh, just continue to just stick in it together and um, try and play through each other. Uh, and I feel like we did a good job of that down the stretch in the second half. We just have to uh, come out the gates. Um, that same way. Yeah. Anything that you noticed about either the way that Brooklyn came out, how hungry they were finally getting back home here, uh, or, or the way that you guys came out that uh, allowed for that start? Um, it's a combination of us and them. Uh, 
<clears throat> they were getting a lot of second chance points. Uh, they were making shots. We were missing shots. Um, ball got a little sticky on offense sometimes. Um, you know, just a perfect combination of what you don't want to happen. Uh, and a lot of it was controllable for us. So uh, we have to get um, into practice and into the film session um, and, and improve those things. Jay was just saying, you know, when you get down big like that, every little thing hurts so much more, you know, loose ball that goes off the wrong way or, you know, that, that kind of thing. What, what does that feel like out there as you're chasing it, um, it late and, and, you know, every little bounce of the ball matters? Uh, I mean, you can't worry about that stuff. Uh, you can't control how the ball bounces sometimes. Um, we just have to go out there and focus on what we can control. And <clears throat> that's boxing out, uh, making the extra pass, running hard in transition, whatever it might be, just control what we can control. And, um, you know, that'll, that'll fix a lot of our problems. So that obviously second straight game where uh, we, we talked about the slow starts and second straight game where you end up catching up by the end of the game, making a, a you know, two possession game. I wonder if you put any value in, you know, that, that late juice that, that makes these games close after being down so much. Uh, I mean, there's definitely value there. Uh, it's it's easy just to give up and say, <clears throat> you know, we'll get the next team, uh, you know, when you're in those situations. But uh, credit to us for not doing that and, and fighting um, and giving ourselves a chance at the end. At the end of the game, you always want to um, put yourself in position to be able to win a game. Um, and we, we almost did that tonight, uh, but weren't quite able to do it all the way. And... Uh, you know, we got to put ourselves in a better position from the jump uh, next time. Yeah, you mentioned second chance points. They went those 30 to 7. And we haven't really talked about rebounding recently because, you know, you're at December stretch, you either match teams up on the glass or you did think that they maybe glossed over some of that. I, I wonder what you saw there tonight that contributed to their, their second chance points uh, deficit. Um, I saw that myself personally, I have to be better on both ends of the floor, <clears throat> rebounding both offensively and defensively. Um, and, and we have to be better as a team, um, not only at, at finding somebody to hit on the glass when the shot goes up, but also going and, and, uh, and getting the ball. It's, it's a combination of both, uh, and it takes all five guys out there, but <clears throat> each one of us has to look at ourselves in the mirror, and uh, you know I'm going to start with myself on that one. Yeah, I, I think you played 33 games at, at Gonzaga, and we're around that mark now. Um, in your first season in the league, I, I wonder how you're holding up and, and how – just the schedule and everything is treating you? Um, <clears throat> I mean, we're in the middle of uh, a long season with, um, you know, a lot of physical games with uh, really great athletes. So, um, you know, there's going to be bumps and bruises along the way. Um, you know, you're not going to wake up feeling perfect every single day. But, um, you know, if you try and dwell on that and focus too much on that, uh, it's going to take away from figuring out how to try and win games. So that's that's where our focus is. Chad, how different did the Nets look tonight compared to the game on New Year's Eve? Um, <clears throat> they definitely came out with more force. Um, they came out and punched us first in that game too, but um, you know they they uh, continued that on for a, a larger portion of the game tonight. Um, they were a more physical team, and um, you know that's what helped them win the game. Nick Gallo, Casey Thunder, uh, Mark, you guys often talk about solving problems all, you know, as a five-man unit, solving them together. What did you see from your team to actually do that in the second half and, and try to resolve some of those issues out on the floor to give yourselves a, at least um, a, a shot late? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a position you don't want to be in, but uh, if we find ourselves in those positions, we want to be a team that keeps fighting uh, and, you know, squeezes everything out of the 48 minutes that we can. Uh, and I thought we did that, but I thought, you know, obviously the lesson tonight is you can't um, dig a hole like that and expect to come back and win the game. At, at halftime, Grant Gibbs said, you know, it's just energy, effort, you know, physicality thing. Uh, was that your take? Was, it, was there uh, anything that really stood out to you about that first half that you know you guys got to do better? Yeah, they were just the aggressor in the game on both ends of the floor. I thought, you know, really credit them. They'd struggled lately, uh, and they did a great job of attacking the game and setting a tone for the game. They had the ball ahead of us on offense, and then defensively they were physical with us, and they were tight in their coverages, and they built a nice lead because of that. They had 17 second-chance points at halftime. Uh, so they did a great job 
um, and went and got the game, you know, and, and had way more uh, juice than we did in the first half of that game. So uh, they deserved it, and we tip our hat to them. Mark, you mentioned last game just about wanting to use every minute in an 80-game season, just squeezing the juice out of every minute. But with, with two slow starts like this um, in the same week, do you find any level of concern, or do you attribute it to a variable that you think won't last, or what, what's your thinking there? It's hard in a in an 82-game season to you know react to two-game trends or things like that. You know, at the end of the day, we have a standard that we want to play to. Every day, you're zero and zero. You know, our next game, we're going to show up. You know, it's going to be zero to zero. That game uh, is going to be a game that one of those teams can earn, and we want to play to that standard every single night. I've just found that you know, if you start to react to you know any small sample trend, you end up chasing your shadow and missing out on the opportunity in front of you. So uh, we have to learn the lessons from these games uh, for sure, and we'll do that and we'll stare at them. But at the same time, we need to turn the page and, and get ourselves back to zero and uh, you know put our best foot forward against Washington. Yeah, we talked about the glass, it feels like, earlier on in the season more so. Um, obviously, you guys have done things to maybe cover some of that stuff up, and there are games where you're closer to, to teams on the glass, but today they outscored you 37. Saying chance points, I wonder what you saw there. That allowed them to control the aspect. A lot of it in the first half was just effort and physicality. You know, I thought they just they were hungry for that game, and they played like it. You know, and I thought um, that happens sometimes to start a game, uh, and it takes you a second to get going and you get yourself into the game. But it just took us way too long uh, to pace with them, and eventually, you know, I thought we we had our juice in the second half, but uh, the deficit that we were trying to overcome was obviously way too much. Yeah, and obviously you, you, you say all the time there, there are no two games that are the same. Um, this game was not the same as last game, but in terms of the energy and effort, like you mentioned, is there a common denominator between today and, and the other night? Um, I mean, other than the slow starts and the, the deficits that we allowed ourselves to get into, um, but we just try to we try to take every individual game as its own uh, life, and we try to play that game to the best of our ability, learn the lessons prepare for the next one and repeat the process over and over again. And we do that after wins, we do that after losses, we do that, that's our process. Do you get any sense that after, you know, December you played a bunch of high profile games, then Boston obviously, that coming to play in two sub-100 teams the last couple of games, maybe just tough to get up for that a little bit after a pretty exciting stretch? I hope not. You know, I hope not. I think. We've got a team that, that has a, a pretty uncommon maturity, so with anything like that, uh, they always get the benefit of the doubt from me. You know, they've earned that. They're you know, into it. Um, you know, they prepare. They're professional. They attack the program. They do all the things. I thought we had a great shoot around today. They do all the things that um, you, know, you need to do to get yourself ready that would be predictive of readiness and predictive of urgency. And you know, they're consistent with that all the time. But at the end of the day, there's 82 of these things. We'd love to play perfect, all 82 of them, but uh, no one does. Uh, so we have to learn from it, you know, and, and you know, correct the things that need to be corrected. But at the same time, uh, like I said, I they have the benefit of the doubt from me. Anyone else? We got one more in the corner there. Uh, from Serbia and Kia. Um, Welcome. About, thank you. Uh, about Vasily Mitsic, uh, do you see him as a full-fledged point guard in the league, or more like a cleaner shooting guard? Uh, the way we play is kind of, you know, positionless and, and we move guys around. Obviously, there's times where we use them on the ball like we did tonight. There's times where we have them off the ball as a secondary playmaker. And we, that's really how we use all of our perimeter, really all of our players. Um, but he makes it easy to do that, especially offensively, just with his IQ and his feel. Um, he really knows how to activate his teammates. He gets you shots. Um, he lets the game tell him what to do. He just plays the play in front of him. So you can move him anywhere in the lineup and anywhere on the court. Uh, and he brings that to the table and uh, has brought that from day one. And he's done a great job of keep, keeping himself sharp and ready. Obviously, I haven't played him a consistent role up until recently. Uh, and he's done a great job. Here we go last one, Joel, in front. Uh, Mark, you, you mentioned you know not leaving any stone on turning. I don't want to put any word in your mouth tonight, but um, you played 12 guys, I think, by the start of the second quarter. Just what was your, your line of thinking there? Um, well, it was 10 until the last 50 seconds. I, I subbed Bertans and Lindy 
uh, for a two for one situation just to to get some shooting out there. I don't do that every night, obviously, but with the way the game was going, I was just trying to um, you know try to get everybody involved, see if somebody could give us a spark. You know, it's usually my philosophy when the game's turning like that. Uh, but it wasn't like a 12-man rotation. I just it was a spot sub uh, based on the situation.